Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tony Harvin, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Tony Harvin Network, which is a secondary YouTube channel. In general, we have a new episode of I Am a Boxer, episode number one, where we have Rajon Chance uh, from East Stars, New Jersey, 7-0 professional fighter with one draw. You know, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Rajon Chance for coming on here, brother. Thanks. Thanks, and I appreciate it. And sure, you know, so uh, take us back. You know, to uh, you know, growing up in uh, East Orange, I believe that's where you're from, uh, around the North New Jersey area. You know, yes. with your experience and uh, how was it growing up in uh, East Orange? I mean, growing up in East Orange is fun. It's like uh, mind your business, there. You know what I'm saying? But I was a, I was one of those kids. I was just a cool kid. Uh, don't fuck with me. I won't fuck with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was just it, it was all it was all cool. Everybody was cool. More of the story is mad talent in East Orange and oh, he was yeah. one of the talent ones. You was you was known, you know what I'm saying? So I was one of the talent ones. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Well, like you know I said, that. I love East Orange. I'm always in East Orange. For sure. Uh what made you get involved in boxing? What was your uh inspiration? You know? My inspiration was my pops. Like my pops went to the gym, and one day he said, uh, yo, you want to come to the gym? I said, yeah, sure, why not? When I liked it, I'm like, oh, this is what it's about? <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. My dad thought I wasn't going like, to end up liking it. I thought it was going to be a football player, but after that, hit the bag, train with my pops, and then I said, I want to become a boxer. He said, okay. I sparred. I was getting hit, and I was giving it back, bleeding and everything. And my dad was just, he was proud of me. So that's how, that's how boxing came along to me. I was like seven. That's what's up, man. How, how was the first sparring session, man? And like, what, what gym did you attend uh, out there in uh, East Orange or North? It was North, actually. My first gym was, uh, I'm going to have to, my first real gym, I'm going to have to give it to, uh, it was a gym called First Class, I think it was. Oh, First Class. I, I think that's what it was. Then after that, uh, I went from there to Elite. Not Elite Heat, it was Elite. Just regular Elite in the projects. So oh, me, oh. Shakur Stevenson. Uh, it was mad talented fighters, all of us. We started from the basement, and then it came Elite Heat. That's when everybody came. Shakur, Little Vito. Uh, I can't name all the fighters off the back, but it was mad time in jump. But if... The known names is would be me, Shakur, and Little Vito that was in that team. The known known name that you were. That's what's up, man. And uh, you know, uh, from experience, I know uh, Elite Heat. It definitely was a tough gym. Oh yeah, most <laughs> definitely. You know, uh, I went there one time as far, man. That was just a tough gym in general, man. But that type of direction. I mean, I wanted to be a fighter, but this right here, like doing like media and stuff like that. I think, you know, I excel more in. So sure. uh, I appreciate, you know, talented fighters in general. But, uh, you know, like you said, there's a lot of talent in East Orange and North New Jersey. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just the, the work ethic you got to put in. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that you got to stay out the way, too, when you come down over there. And that part of, like, putting the work in, putting the time in, a lot of people, you know, slack off uh, in general. You know what I mean? Do you remember your first amateur fight and what tournament was it if it was a tournament now nah, my first amateur fight was a, a boxing show and uh i'm gonna have to say it was fun i won too but i was too competitive i was so worried i didn't want to like at that time i was just thinking about undefeated is everything at amateurs now and damn what that 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 that's rare you get what i'm saying i didn't even know so i i won and i was hyped I won my second one. I was hyped. My third one. Did I win my third fight? No, my third fight was an amateur. I mean, it was an amateur uh, tournament. I don't remember what tournament it was. But I was my third fight, and I fought somebody with mad fights. I actually, everybody thought I beat them. But I was hurt because I don't like to lose. So I cried. My dad, everybody was just, I was, I was just crying. I was crying because I was mad. I don't like to lose. That's just me. But my first actual tournament was silver gloves yeah I, yeah silver gloves i never won the silver glove my big my baby brother did the other tournaments and nationals yeah talk to me we could do that so 
<laughs> yeah. That's what's up. And so you fought in the Golden Gloves, the Diamond Gloves, and stuff like that. One or more. One or more. That's what's up, man. You know, and then you went on to the uh, to the National Golden Gloves, correct? Yeah, National Golden Gloves. That that was my last and final amateur tournament in 2019. That was the last and final. I went all the way to the finals. I came on short to a dude named Austin Stevens. Hmm. And yeah. uh, for the people out there who will view this video, what weight class uh, did you fight in? And the amateurs and what weight class you fighting in the professionals in these days? Uh in the amateurs I was, the amateurs I was fighting one twenty three. And as a professional I was fighting one twenty two. Super band and weight. Mm. They, so, they, so they that, change. <laughs> so that that's your that's your walk around weight and fighting weight? Uh definitely not the walk around weight. That's just fighting weight. Okay. Walk walk around weight, I walk a little big. But as a pro, it's a little different. You come down, you weigh in one time, you hydrate for 24 hours. You know what I'm saying? And the way you wake weight, you make your weight smart. You start camp smart. You stay in the gym. You don't just, you know what I mean, take breaks and shit like that. So I feel as though when you have a certain weight or you have a certain fight coming up or you got a potential fight coming up, stay out of the gym no matter what. Cool, cool. Besides the gym, uh, do you find it difficult as far as like dieting and your eating habits when uh, trying to make weight? It's not difficult. It's just discipline. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, it's definitely good. not difficult. Just discipline. Like I got a girl here, uh, Lisa. Soto. She also a boxer, but she helps me with my diet and stuff. Make sure I'm on top of it. Make sure I don't eat no junk. I, I, I could be wild sometimes, but <laughs> I know I know. Like once I'm when I'm there, like when I know like lockdown, that's it. Yeah. I ain't gonna do nothing. That's what's up, man. I know uh, East Stars North area got some good uh, fighters. I had some good fighters like you know Farouk Salim, uh, mm -hmm. Jerison Ravello, uh, Shakur Stevenson. Uh, what is it, Watson Elson? You know mm -hmm. Alan Lawrence and yeah. stuff like that. Who? What other uh, fighters out there uh, that gave you inspiration? My two little brothers, hmm. Emmanuel Chance and July Chance. Back mm -hmm. from East from East Stars and. I'm gonna be honest with you. When it comes to my brothers, I'm a professional, so I'm not gonna even count me as an amateur. I'm looking for world titles and stuff like that. Now I'm on the bigger and better. But when it comes to like great fighters as amateurs right now, I'm giving it to my little brother, Mayo Chin. He is a 12-time national champion. Wow. Exactly. And if you ask me how old he is, he's only 16 years old. Wow. And my other brother is back right back into it. He's a killer. And he he's already punching, punching to the point where I punch him if you punch me, <laughs> punch me. So uh, yeah, that's just my opinion on that. That's what's up, man. As far as like sparring and whatnot, uh, what type, what top names have you uh sparred and what have you learned uh from them? Because I saw that you was in the gym with uh Tio Fimo at one point. Um, <laughs> uh, top names. You know what's funny? What's up? Tio, I gave Tio work, mm. so I, I ain't really gonna speak too much on that. He's a good fighter though. But um, the top names that I struggled with, I could say, mm. Keyshawn Davis, mm. uh, Shakur Stevenson, uh, I can't really say I struggled with Cool Boy stuff, but he gave me great work, and we in the same weight class. So if we was to fight. I don't know if it will be later on or he'll move up. You know what I'm saying? He already, 22 division, he already, like, you know what I mean? Got all the belts. So I don't know if he'll move up after this in a way fight. Yeah. But, but I'll give it, I like Cool Boy. Uh, Raymond, Raymond Ford, me and him go back and forth. I like Gray. Raymond Ford. Um, who else? Um, it's one person that, like, hit me with a body shot and lifted my ass up. His name is his name is Jerron in his boots. Oh, from Philly. Yeah. Yeah. No, he lifted me, literally. Like, <laughs> so it was like, oh sh I never sparred him again. I just be talking shit. I it. <laughs> <laughs> he about like 147 weight class or 154? Not 147, but when it comes to like sparring us, I don't care who I spar, I don't care how big you is, I don't care nothing. I'm learning or whatever. I beat a lot of big motherfuckers up. So it's like I don't care how big you is, I don't care about none of that. I'm and my, I got, I got this thing. Am I allowed to curse on your podcast? It's all good, man. It's all, all good. Right, cool. I got this thing called little nigga syndrome. 
And if you call me little, I, I'm gonna try to beat you. <laughs> <laughs> so other than that, it's, it's it's I'm gonna have to say um I learned a lot from all of them, but the one that gave me the top two struggles, I'm going to give it to Corey Stevenson and Keyshawn Davis. Mm. Like, like they 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 I gotta like literally uh, like be on my p's and q's because anything any mistake they capitalize on from the first round wow yeah so it's like all right bet and then i'm the little brother out of both of them so i get competitive i want to take their head off but Keyshawn, i just sparred recently i gotta get your call back <laughs> uh describe your uh your first professional fight man and what made you go pro and how was you feeling that day of you know the first time you know you stepped in that ring and the first time that bell went off during your first professional uh, round i mean it's two things why i decided to go pro first i decided to go pro because one i knew the game well the olympic games and the usas and stuff like that and i was right because you had this guy named bruce carrington that won the whole olympic trials and stuff like that mm. and I'm looking, I see he won, he deserved it. Like he literally deserved it. Like he he literally put his ass up. He won every day. And I think in the Olympic trials, if you lose, you get to fight you fight him again. I don't know how that works. I never get that. But he won. He beat everybody. You got what I'm saying? Yeah. He he did what he had to do. But they still took Duke Reagan to the uh Olympics. I ain't understand it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I guess they say he has so many points and this and that and I I can't knock it. I respect both of Duke Reagan and Bruce Carrington, but I just feel as though like Bruce could have had it because Duke is already a pro. You know what I'm saying? So I, I couldn't knock it. I understood with Keyshawn because Keyshawn won everything. No one beat him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Take him from the pros, go to Olympic. I just didn't understand it with that because it was like he won everything. But like I said, it was politics and he had the points and Duke deserved it and he got a silver, which, which is also good as well. So what made me want to turn pro is like, I knew I didn't have no shot at the Olympics no more. It was just like, man, right, let's make this money. Let's be a world <laughs> champion. We got time for that. So I'm going to have to say, uh, when that first bell ring as a pro, I'm like, oh, this shit is really happening. <laughs> so I was just like, go get him. I took him out first round. No, no ends, no ifs, no buts. And I seen the lights. I seen the PBC thing across from me. I'm just like, wow. That's all I can say. It's like, wow, I'm here. Like, I ain't had nothing to really say, but wow. You know what I'm saying? That's what's just up, man. Oh, wow. That was it. But then now, if I fight in any big platform, it's not no wow. It's not no nothing. It's kill mode. Simple. Mm. Did you have any uh, tough fights uh, in the professionals or any yeah. fights that you learned from? Yeah, Elon Jesus, for sure. The draw that I had, I learned from. The first one you're talking about? Yeah, and the reason why I learned from that is not only I didn't learn from that because of skill. No, I learned from that because of health. I had a concussion before that fight. Hmm. So it was like I could have died that night. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, but no one my age would have took a rematch. I was 21 years old, a young fighter at that. And I'm risking my career just for a rematch with another undefeated fighter, a knockout artist at that. So I'm like, man, I can't sleep unless I fight you. So I fought him. And I'm still undefeated, so that's what's up, man. I, I saw yeah, a lot yeah. of your fights. I saw a lot of your fights was out of America. You know what I mean? You yeah, yeah, yeah. In other places. So, uh, could you explain that? Um, when I was playing in Mexico, you know, COVID had hit. Oh, okay. Yeah. At the time, and I had to get the record up or whatever. And I, no one, no boxer, I'm gonna have to say, going through COVID and my team taking me to Mexico and stuff like that. No boxer was doing that, but. I thank God that I did that because one, you're getting your feet wet still, you're not rusty and whatever, because it's a lot of fighters that was going through that COVID stuff and they got back in the ring, it didn't look too well because it was so rusty and so long, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm glad I got my feet wet. Then I ended up getting back on the PBC scene. And then after that, PBC was, I was under uh, Chris Colbert. You know how like Earl Spence got Frank Martin? Yeah. I was under Chris Colbert. So with PBC as well, and my brother, I, I, don't, I don't really know, but it's still going to always be my brother, but it was still like a, you taking too long to fight me. So I end up 
just saying, I don't care no more. I'm going to do my own thing. And that's the best, one of the best decisions I think I made because you can't wait on no man to be great. So I just decided to, me and my team just decided to be great and I went to Columbia, got a belt, and now we're about to fight soon, right now, March 4th, in Jersey. All right, potential center of note. Jersey, isn't Jersey City called White Hall, White Eagle Hall? I don't think that's what it's called. White Eagle Hall. Yeah, it's a, it's a new thing. They just followed me on uh, Instagram. They was verified and everything. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to show you when we get off wow. here. I got you. That's what's up, man. You know. So, uh, last but not least, but what advice would you give a, a young fighter or just the youth coming up in the uh, the urban areas or in general? You know, what I mean, how to stay positive, how to stay focused on their craft, whether it's boxing, basketball, football, or just anything in uh, in general. My advice to anybody: have fun, but know what's your bread and butter. Like, right? know that you gotta work hard, uh, stay on top of your craft. Like, for example. Regardless if I'm chilling or whatever, I shadow box everywhere I go. You know, it's just a habit now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Work on your, stay working on your crap because that's the only way you can be great. Stay stay locked in and make sure the people that's around you stay with you for a while. Stay with you and you know that they're going to stay solid. That's my, that's my outtake. That's what's up. I got one more question before we end this. Um, what's up? Besides boxing or when you retire from boxing, what is it that you – that you want to do, you know what I mean? Uh, outside of boxing, you know, whether you want to become a doctor or whatever the case may be, something that you always wanted to become besides boxing. <laughs> I mean, I see you got a YouTube channel, so you know people make you know. I would do. I would be a podcaster. Oh, podcaster, cool man. Because I know every podcast that I'll do would be lit. Because we we gonna talk about boxing, but we also gonna talk about mad other. Shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's how you make a lit ass cast. Like, for example, Mike Tyson, he talked about boxing, but he also talked about more. Uh, yeah. You got million dollars worth the game. Perfect. You talk about yep. boxing, but you talk about mad other shit. Like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be a podcaster or I'll be a promoter. One of the two. Yeah, I mean, podcasting is cool, man. It's, it's tough work, man. <laughs> it's tough work. Nah, it's definitely tough work, but I know everybody. So, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. it's different. So. That's what's up, man. I definitely appreciate you for coming on this uh this uh, episode, man. I'm a boxer, man. Really appreciate it, man. Always, sure. son. Always. Always. And tune in for the uh fight announcement tomorrow. And hope to see everybody show out in Jersey. We lit. That's what's up, man. That was Ray John Chance from East Stars, New Jersey. Thank y'all for tuning in, man. I'm host Tony Harvin. Peace, peace, peace. Yes, sir.